As part of the rewards for Conjunction Survival, you can pick up four new arcanes, split across your primary, secondary and warframe. There's no doubt that maxing out one of these arcanes will take quite some time, so are they worth it? I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. This probably isn't the first video you've watched on this channel, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch more guides as they go live. You can also support future videos by hitting the join or thanks buttons below the video. The four arcanes added with Lewis Prey are Arcane Rise and Arcane Blessing for your Warframe, Primary Frostbite for your primary weapons, and Conjunction Voltage for your secondary weapons. Each of them can be bought at rank 0 for 15 Lua Thrax Plasm from Archimedean Yonta on the Zaraman, and they can also be earned as drops from the higher tier Conjunction Survival Mission, Circulus. Arcane Rise and Conjunction Voltage drop from Rotation B at 7.94% each, while Arcane Blessing and Primary Frostbite are on Rotation C at 10.2% each. So they take a little bit longer to get on the first pass, but they drop more frequently. If you start out with no Arcanes or Plasm, it will take you roughly 35 Rotation Cs, so just about 12 hours, to get a full set of each Arcane. This is assuming you get 30 Lua Thrax Plasm every 20 minutes. Farming this way, most of your Arcanes will be bought, as the 30 Plasm from 20 minutes will buy you two of them, while the round rewards won't give you any arcanes 83% of the time. If you've farmed for this mission for other rewards such as Varuna, then you'll only have some of the arcanes in your possession, which will cut down the time some small amount. So considering it's going to take quite a while to get a full set of even one arcane, what are they good for? Arcane Rise goes onto your Warframe, giving you a 60% chance on reloading your primary weapon to gain plus 150% damage for the next 24 seconds. This only applies to weapons which actively reload, so it doesn't trigger on recharge weapons like the Fulmin, nor does it trigger on weapons which draw directly from their ammo pool, like the Kuba Brahma. On the other hand, weapons which reload one shot at a time, like the Felarks, have multiple chances to trigger this bonus, making it very reliable. This Arcane is a direct copy of its older cousin, Arcane Awakening, which provides the exact same stats except for secondary weapons. When applied, the damage bonus from Arcane Rise is additive to other pure damage bonuses, such as Serration and Primary Merciless. With more pure damage bonuses already on your weapon, this Arcane has a lower effective bonus. It'll increase your overall damage by 56.6% when you pair it with Serration, or just 32.61% when used alongside the primary Steel Path Arcanes. So with that in mind, let's see how it compares to the effectiveness of other Arcanes that you could put in the same slot. Arcane Primary Charger will give you double the bonus of Arcane Rise at the cost of requiring a melee kill rather than a reload, lasting for half the time and having half the trigger chance. Arcane Rage will give you a slightly higher bonus than Rise at 180% for the same 24 second duration. However, this requires you to land a headshot and has an even lower trigger rate of just 15%. Compared to these two options, Arcane Rise is more convenient to trigger, but for a lower bonus. The other direct competitors for damage output are Arcane Avenger and Arcane Acceleration. Arcane Acceleration triggers on critical hit and increases fire rate by 90%, making it easy to trigger and not competing with other pure damage bonuses, instead adding to fire rate bonuses. Arcane Avenger on the other hand applies a fixed 45% absolute increase to critical chance for 12 seconds when you're hit, with a 21% chance to trigger. While again it has a lower trigger rate and duration than Arcane Rise, the bigger points are that you need to take damage to trigger the bonus, and then the bonus applies to criticals instead of your pure damage. The higher your weapon's damage bonus, the more preferable Arcane Avenger becomes. But conversely, the higher your weapon's modded critical chance, then the less overall effect Arcane Avenger has. As it turns out, we can mark some simple breakpoints between Avenger and Rise. If you're using one of the Steel Path Arcanes on your primary weapon for plus 360% damage, then Arcane Avenger will usually provide a more effective bonus than Arcane Rise on your crit-based weapons up until around 118% critical chance. This is tied to your critical damage multiplier, with higher multipliers pushing back the point where Arcane Rise overtakes Arcane Avenger. No matter what though, with just the Steel Path Arcane for pure damage bonus on your weapon, Arcane Avenger stops being better than Arcane Rise in almost all situations once you reach 138% critical chance. Beyond that point, Arcane Rise will always have a higher on-paper DPS. There are still some enemies which are weaker to critical hits than normal damage, such as the Archons, so in some cases you will still want to have Avenger beyond that critical chance. 
If you're not using a Steel Path Arcane, instead relying on Serration for your pure damage bonus, then Arcane Rise overtakes Avenger entirely by just 80% modded critical chance, and in most practical cases, by just 58% modded crit chance. So while pure damage bonuses may seem to have diminishing returns, they can still be the better pick in comparison to other options if the conditions align. If you're in a position where you've already got a very high crit chance weapon, or if you don't want to take consistent damage to proc Arcane Avenger, if you don't want combo melee and primary kills together, if you don't want more fire rate, and if you don't want to be aiming for headshots, then you should use Arcane Rise. If any of those conditions aren't true, however, look instead to the other more powerful Arcane to match. Arcane Rise is capable, reliable and simple, but it isn't the strongest choice in most cases. Next up we have Primary Frostbite. This Arcane goes onto your primary weapon, and as a result requires access to the Steel Path in order to be able to use it. Every time you apply a cold status proc by any means, including other weapons or abilities, even your companion, you gain a stack onto this Arcane. At max rank, each stack provides plus 3% critical damage and plus 2.25% multi-shot, to a max of 40 stacks for plus 120% critical damage and plus 90% multi-shot. This bonus lasts for 12 seconds, with any new stack refreshing the duration. This Arcane is in direct competition with the Steel Path Arcanes, which all offer plus 360% damage and token other benefits. By this tier of play, you'll also have access to Galvanized Chamber, providing up to 230% multi-shot bonus in itself. Add on to this, you'll already have plus 120% critical damage from the mod Vital Sense, and it seems that the bonuses offered by Primary Frostbite may not add up high enough. Indeed, the effective multi-shot bonus from this Arcane, stacked against Galvanized Chamber, is only a 27.3% increase. For comparison, even when combined with Serration, which a lot of builds avoid, you'll find Primary Merciless is granting a 135.9% effective increase in damage, which is far higher than that 27%. The Arcane's bonus to critical damage simply will not make up this difference. To make matters worse, the stacks on Frostbite do not expire one by one like they do on the Steel Path Arcanes. If you go 12 seconds without landing a cold status effect, all 40 stacks are instantly lost. This Arcane then is an objectively inferior option for damage dealing in most circumstances. The plus 360% damage from the Steel Path is just too much to ignore. There is a different use for the multi-shot bonus however. One thing the Steel Path Arcanes do not support at all is a status primer weapon. If you're using a primary weapon to apply status for other weapons, such as using a Cedo to support your melee, then bonus damage on the Cedo is pretty pointless. Instead here, a multi-shot bonus will help you to apply that status effect faster. Not only that, but if you're not killing with the status primer, then you'll be using an ordinary multi-shot mod instead of the galvanized one, so the Arcane's bonus will be comparatively higher than on damage dealing weapons. So the use of primary frostbite is on status primer weapons where either the Primer or something else in your arsenal is able to put out consistent and numerous cold status effects. The only time you should consider using it on a damage focused weapon is when you have a very high additive pure damage bonus on your weapon, specifically from Chroma's Vex Armor. That's the only ability that can make a Steel Path Arcane's damage bonus less effective than Primary Frostbite, and then only if you're putting out enough cold procs. The third Arcane is Conjunction Voltage. This one goes onto your secondary weapon, again requiring access to the Steel Path in order to unlock the slot to use it on. Similar to Primary Frostbite, landing an electric proc by any weapon, ability or your companion will trigger this Arcane, giving you plus 1.5% reload speed and plus 3% multi-shot on your secondary weapon. This stacks up to 40 times for a maximum bonus of 60% reload speed and 120% multi-shot. Just like with Frostbite, this Arcane bonus lasts for 12 seconds, refreshing with every trigger. Also just like Frostbite, Conjunction Voltage is competing directly with the Steel Path Arcanes for damage and is watered down by the existence of both Galvanized Diffusion and Lethal Torrent when it comes to multi-shot. Conjunction Voltage gives just a 31% effective bonus at full stack when used alongside these two mods. Put simply, there is no amount of reload speed that can make up for such a small bonus versus the Steel Path Arcanes. Once again then, this reduces Conjunction Voltage to only being useful on a status primer secondary. If you are able to consistently and rapidly apply electric procs to get and keep the stacks on the arcane, it will provide a multi-shot bonus to make that effect stronger than with any other arcane. But if your secondary weapon is not a status primer, then there is no use for conjunction voltage on it. Lastly then, we have Arcane Blessing. This is a curious arcane for your Warframe. 
At max rank, it increases your maximum health by 24 every time you pick up a health orb. This continues until a maximum stack of 50 for 1,200 health, ignoring bugs for now. 1,200 health is a hefty chunk. This is more health than a max rank vitality can give to all but three Warframes, and is more health than even a full Umbral set can achieve for the vast majority of frames. So that's good, right? Well, sometimes. The problem with this arcane is finding a use case for most Warframes. You're taking up an arcane slot that could be used for healing, such as arcane grace or arcane victory, in exchange for a higher maximum health. In most non-endless missions, however, I only found that I'd gain a handful of health orbs throughout, including the guaranteed drops from the Xmas units, which spawn usually later into a mission. For endless missions, you'll eventually get endless health orbs, but again, on balance, this doesn't cap out the arcane for the first few rotations. A whole chunk of mission time is spent without having the full benefit that the arcane was promising you. Warframes which generate health orbs can get around this limitation. Abilities like Desecrate or Blazing Chakram can get health orbs from nearly every kill. Frames with those abilities can quickly stack up Arcane Blessing, granting them significantly higher buffer against bursts of high damage from enemies. Let's look at those health orb generators more closely. Necros doesn't have a huge tank, with his base kit relying on distracting or terrifying enemies. Vitality on him will increase his health at level 30, from 300 to 740. With Arcane Blessing, Necros will surpass Vitality at just 19 health orbs, which he'll generate from about 32 bodies. That's easy to achieve pretty early into a mission, so it's usable on Necros. Nezha, however, does have a lot of tank thanks to Warding Halo, in addition to having a large crowd control ability in Divine Spears. With 23 enemies affected by Blazing Chakram, Nezha will have enough health orbs to beat out Vitality, or 40 health orbs to beat out a full Umbral set. Bearing in mind that Nezha can still benefit greatly from the strength and armour of the Umbral set, and is very tanky with the full set, it's hard to justify adding the Arcane on top, and even harder to justify replacing Umbral Vitality with Arcane Blessing. Nezha simply doesn't need it. Oberon's Reckoning generates health orbs half the time when it kills an enemy. At any level where you're able to get and need Arcane Blessing, it's unlikely the damage from Reckoning is actually going to kill many units. In this case, if the health bonus is actually important to your survival, the low rate of orbs will make it too little, too late to be of help. Looking then to Protea's Dispensary, it will continuously put out health orbs one or two at a time every five seconds, or longer between if you're also grabbing the other pickups. Those orbs provide 100 healing apiece, rather than the 50 of normal orbs or 25 of health orbs in the past, but the Arcane will still only give 24 extra max health per orb. Over the course of a few minutes, Protea will be able to max out Arcane Blessing, but notably, she doesn't need it. Protea's core defense is in enhanced shields using her grenade fan, which also provides an improved shield gate. If you really want extra health from Protea, it's usually better to go for Archon Vitality, as this will also double up the heat procs from her blaze artillery. So as much as Protea can generate the health orbs on dispensary, she doesn't really need it. Trinity's Well of Life can generate health orbs when it's augmented with the mod Pool of Life. This will produce 4 health orbs each time a marked enemy is killed, maxing out the arcane in just 13 marked targets. This is also a subsumable ability, so you can put it onto other Warframes too. Well of Life also synergizes with Arcane Blessing, as it also produces healing. So not only do you have a higher max health, you are then also regenerating that health. Lastly for Warframe abilities, there's Varuna's Lycaf's Hunt. Again, it's a subsumable ability, this time generating health orbs from 50% of melee kills, or 100% on Varuna. There's nothing fancy to it, so as long as you're killing with melee, then this will grant the necessary orbs. So in the case of Necros with Desecrate, or Warframes using Well of Life with its Augment, or Lycaf's Hunt with melee, Arcane Blessing can be stacked up quick enough to be of significant use. By removing Vitality from your build in the process, you can replace that with the mod Health Conversion, to also gain up to 1350 armor from these health orbs making the tank against burst damage even better. But without those abilities to generate a high volume of health orbs, certainly in non-endless missions, if you need the health from this arcane for survival, then you're probably dead before the arcane will finish building up. So in summary, we've got an arcane for reliable but modest primary damage, two arcanes for adding multi-shots as status primers, and then an arcane to replace vitality on builds which generate a lot of health orbs. It comes down to your playstyle to determine if these are worth your time to farm, or worth your platinum to trade for. At the very least, I hope this gives you the information you need to make that decision. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, and as always, farm arcanes, stack bonuses, and fight well, Tenno.